Okay, let's get into Picard, man. <clears throat> All right. Um, you want to walk me through uh, just a quick little synopsis of, of what happened here? Yeah, nothing. So, yeah, great episode. <laughs> so nothing happened. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, though, I, there's the thing I'm going to say. I'll say a couple things about this episode quickly, and then I'll tell you, and I'll break it down a little bit and so that we can get into it. Um, this was by far the best acting in two seasons of the show. This episode had the best acting, okay? Uh, and and it was Patrick Stewart's best acting and, of course, James Callis, who we're going to talk about more um, moving into this. Um, we spent some time inside of Picard's brain this episode. Um, we missed some major movements in the story, um, but we did learn some incredible things about his character, some backstory, which was positive. Unfortunately, and we called it, and uh, Star Trek is about mental health, and they're doubling down on what they took from Discovery, and they're doing it here in Picard because we find out that his mother has mental health issues. Q seems to have mental health issues. Rafi has mental health issues. Mental health is the theme for Star Trek Picard and Star Trek New Trek in general. I'm very curious to see what happens when Strange New Worlds comes out because I'm terrified that they're going to be dealing with constant uh, mental issues. Um, yeah, they're all going to have mental health problems. Well. Yeah, that's, I don't. Oh, except for, except for that or super rare uh, Andorian. I always forget, his, uh, I forget, I forget his name. He's not going to name um, him. He's going to be like an absolute oh, Hammer? Chad. He's blind, bro. Hear him. He's, he's going to be an absolute Chad, bro. I guarantee you that. The best character, and I'm calling it now, the best character okay. in Strange New World will be Harem. I okay. guarantee you that. Hammer? Yeah. Hammer, whatever his name is. I went and looked yeah. I went and looked at the actors, uh, some of the uh, some other stuff you did, and you guys are gonna like this character. Uh real no, quick. One good thing about Picard is the whole episode they were like gearing up for the ways like, I don't wanna be like my dad, I wanna be like you. My dad sucks. Dad's mean. And like, he's the villain. And like, all of a sudden you figure out it's the coincidentally, the guy with the super long hair, even though his dad in TNG was bald. Um, I have, and, I have an argument for that. Cause I know a lot of people are mad about it. I don't really care about it, but what I do care about is that I thought they were setting up the whole dad's evil mm, men right. are bad, whatever nonsense. And then it turned out that, his mom had mental problems and his dad was trying to protect him the whole time. His dad wasn't the bad guy, which was shocking. It was shocking. Yeah, that was good. Because well, like, I, like I told you when we talked about it, uh, mental health trumped uh, white man bad. Yeah, mental and health so, trumps white man bad. You know, and so that's why, you know, they were able to go to that level. But I guarantee you, had this not been about mental health, it would have been about, you know, the domestic typical abuse. dad domestic abuse trope, yeah. which unfortunately is was a huge huge problem for a long time. I don't know how much of a problem uh, father mental abuse will be in in uh, Picard's youth time frame. I mean, that is centuries ahead of us and we're supposed to be more enlightened. And right. so I, I will say one thing I'm glad about is that um, all the weird pre previews we were seeing of his mom and like them dressed up as like, you know, King Arthur time or what the heck was going on, like a monster dragging her across the floor. I'm like, yeah. what in the heck? You know, we come to learn that it was a fantasy and a story that, you know, Picard's inner child is telling to his father. Yeah, that, I do. Remember that I one. Do. I remember that one scene where I was like, Shane, I swear if she's being assimilated right now, I'm done. Like, I, I quit. <laughs> I freaking quit. Yeah. yeah. So when I found out it was mental health issues, I'm like, oh, cool. Although he did reference her as the queen and red hair. And he did had some like he dropped some weird org type it's it's your paranoia getting i hope i hope it is bro yeah because he was the prince remember so she it was her they were they were trying to highlight the fact that she's not all there you know right um but what's interesting is so james callis of course they wanted this actor he's got gorgeous hair 51 years old and his hair is rocking and uh they wanted him in there because he's, he's an incredible actor of course we know him from battlestar galactica uh, he played a Cylon, uh, probably one of the best characters from Battlestar. Oh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he eventually became a Cylon. He wasn't a Cylon from the get. Right. He actually he had mental that. health problems in in Battlestar Galactica. He had which was, yeah. and he was imagining the Cylon. 
Right, right. So that's yes. I mean, it's a trope. It's it's a trope you it's can play. And in this case, in this case, it doesn't feel that bad. I, I think when you measure it to the all the entire Star Trek, trying to like use mental health as a as a as a theme, maybe it's a little bit irritating. But in this specific situation, uh, we find out that Picard's father. It would have been bad, I think, for Star Trek and for Picard's legacy for his father to have been an abusive, terrible person, anyways. Because we have seen other stuff with him. And while he didn't have a great relationship with him, I think it would have just been too much, you know, pointed to have it end up that being the story. And instead, and I'll tell you what I believe, uh, first off, the baldness. So he said inside the show, he's like, uh, well, I kept my hair. When he's there doing the reveal that it's his father, he makes this comment, well, you know, I kept my hair, even though you haven't. Well, we know, of course, in TNG that the that the image of his father that we see in that episode, the, his father's bald as well. Maybe in Picard's mind, his father has hair. And we'll just go with that, right? All right, whatever. Um, but it's important to note that um, the, his father and him did not have a good relationship. And I believe what's going to happen, what we're going to learn, because they, they said the story isn't over yet, okay? So he, they didn't finish telling what happened to his mom. And we know his mom died young, early. What I think is going to happen, what we're going to find out in season three, I don't even think we'll find out in the season, be season three, is we're going to find out that Picard let his mom out. His dad locked his mom up for her safety. Picard, thinking his dad was doing something wrong, lets his mom out and his mom ends up dying. And so I think his mom will end up dying and Picard never forgives himself. And this is why he can't feel close to other people and have relationships because he's never forgiven himself for basically being responsible for his mom's death. I think that's what we're going to find out maybe in season three. Yeah, I got, I have, I have, I'm having so many problems with this season, to be honest, because there is this awesome story that they should be telling, but they keep diverting us into these Totally waste of time, non-important episodes. Look, if it was episodic or even semi-episodic and there was 20 episodes in the season, fine. You know, uh, fill in episodes, do episodes that build character and not actually further the story. Completely fine. There are 10 episodes. We are in episode 7. That means there are 3 episodes left. And we are still in the same place we were at. And in, in, in episode two, basically. Yeah. I mean, there was a little more movement, but not much. We came back to the past and that's it. Like, come on, man. Well, they've now added more storylines. And this is the thing that's frustrating. It's like, it's like trying to herd cats. You know, they, they're loot. The, the writing room is all over the place here. Now we've added this, this storyline where we're going to get to about the, the FBI agent, you know? Oh. And so just like one more thing going. And in this episode, no cue. No Soong, no Jurati. Like those are like the three main moving elements of the story right now. And yeah. none of those characters were in it, yeah. you know? So, so guys, just to, just to, to, let's just reiterate real quick what happened. Giant is super advanced board, comes out of anomaly, probably shifts them to another time, right? Or maybe it was yeah. Q, who knows? But it's a horrible time where the world sucks. And then they steal the last Borg left, the Borg Queen, the most gnarly guy thing in existence, and they go back to the past to save the problem. Now, that's where we're at. Since then, we have now been introduced to a uh, an ancestor of him that is that's going to another planet to bring back an organism that may probably is not important. Um, Q is sick and he's having problems. Guinan is apparently very powerful. Who knew about that? Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We have we have uh, immigration, and Rafi and Seven are dealing with relationship problems, and Picard's dealing with his mental problems and, and death of his mother. And, oh, 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 and there's a Borg queen in 2024 wandering San Francisco. L.A., we, yeah. L.A., sorry. We have introduced so many storylines to this and all the fans really want, and I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking for everyone, but I think generally speaking, 
is to continue the story we started in the first two episodes. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like this episode could have happened if it happened maybe towards the beginning. It feels just really out of place. Um, you know, it would, I would argue that the acting was really good and the character development about Picard's character is is fine. Maybe they need more than 10 episodes. Maybe they need 12 or 14 so that they can do this sort of thing. It's not that it's bad. It's just that they're treading water. There's We're not moving. Maybe and we're, or we're moving so slow. And we had the same complaint about Picard season one. I remember us talking about every week going, well, okay, well, they probably could have told this story in three episodes. Right. Realistically. And the, the, I feel like the same thing's happening here where characters don't really have a point. Like what's going, we'll talk more about it, but you know, what's, what's Rio's doing? What's going on here? And Rafi and, and seven are just like wandering around everywhere. They literally have no chemistry, bro. I mean, as, as yeah, a couple, don't. Yeah, they they're supposed no to be a couple. I, I don't I don't buy it for a second. They they don't have any chemistry at all. They have no chemistry yet, yet Rafi's talking about seeing them old together on a porch, whatever the heck she's talking about. But yet we, there is no chemistry here that we've seen. I all forgot we have, they were dating. Yeah, right. All we have is a, a handhold at the end of at the very end of a season one. And I think uh some sort of a loving embrace or something that happened earlier this season. It does not you know, and, and especially they have to go a lot further because both of these ladies had men in their lives at one point. So, you know, there's a whole weird thing about that. You I, know, think, that I think I know what the problem there is, too. I think the part, part of the problem with that lack of chemistry is on Jerry Ryan. And I'm sure she's a fine actor, but Jerry Ryan, if you guys don't know, once once upon a time was a staunch uh, Republican and she is not a lesbian in real life. So. I don't. I think she's having a really hard time uh, giving that loving chemistry that you would need to actually sort of show that you're in a relationship. She did it with characters on Voyager, no problem. No, no, no. She no. She never had a loving. No, I would no, argue she never loved relationship. But 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 there was chemistry between her and Chakotay. Sure, but what I'm trying to say is like Jerry Ryan's character Seven of Nine does not have any experience as far as we know. And she comes from the Fenris Rangers when we come into Picard and she's hard as steel, man. She's, she's hard. Hmm. You know, you, there's no loving about this character. We don't have any on screen, like softness about this character at all, ever. Now we don't know what happened those years. She was with Chakotay after Voyager. We don't know what happened, but she's definitely, we're seeing, we're seeing seven as she is. And I think Jerry Ryan's playing the character like, well, seven wouldn't be a lovey dovey character. Because she doesn't have that experience, right? I don't know. Um, I just think if it doesn't fit the character, <clears throat> you should have introduced it. It was obviously just... It's just pointless. It was yeah. dribble. It was... They haven't developed the relationship, so it's it was pointless to make them to, to do that. It's uh, They were pointing. They were, they were utilizing the... I don't know. The inclusive thing. Real quick, before oh. we get to the next topic, uh, Jeremy Snyder asked, nice beanie. Is that a mixed tease? It will be. <laughs> it is a. It is the. Yes, Brian has a, an entire uh, headwear line of of podcast. Um, pop. What is it? Pop culture historian. So yeah. Matt Bader said, "I wish Trisha Hef 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 Helfer played his mom." I mean, any reason to see Trisha Helper back on state on screen? I'll take it. <laughs> uh, did anyone? Uh, blah, 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 blah. The episode was awful. And where's the brother? The brother was the monster. So the monster inside of uh, that was holding the kid in the in the dungeon. If you looked at it, it looked awfully a lot like his brother. Weird. And I bet that that's there's some sort of symbology. They tend tended to probably do that. Mm. And yes, they both were, you know, didn't have a great relationship with their father. So. Yeah, Dork Knight said, "I thought being gay was not a choice. Why would someone choose to be gay all of a sudden if they the heterosexual?" Yeah, listen, man, that that um. Those goalposts are moving around, moving around a lot. So I'm not going to pretend to understand it, to be yeah. honest with you, because it's not understandable to me. No. So, um, okay. Yeah, so, we, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to keep going with the episode real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um. So, so Talon is a Romulan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm glad that you brought it up because yeah. I wanted to make it very clear. 
that uh oh yeah i called that three you weeks did. ago say that. the second they first off the second they introduced not Tallinn, not Loris, whatever her name is. <laughs> not Loris. We'll call her not Loris. The like second that. they introduced not Loris, Dork Knight and I, Danny and I on Salty Nerd literally said, okay, that's Gary Seven, 100%. That's a Gary Seven type character. Like, um, Okay. That very first episode, we called it on. What? No, no, no. It was called by us two days before when I said it was a oh, Gary. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Because of the doorway. You're right. The doorway. Now. That ended up being too many podcasts, dude. We can't. I know I do too many podcasts. That ended up being 100% correct. But on that same podcast, I said, I bet you if it's Gary Seven, remember that one character that like can turn from a cat to a person, she has some kind of ability or tech or whatever that can allow her to change her, right? Change her, you know, uh, appearance. Boom, Romulan. And all those, you know, and I like it. I'll tell you why I like it, even though it's obvious. They dropped so many Easter eggs that if the, if she wasn't Romulan, I was going to be officially pissed off. Yeah, well, as soon as she put the earpiece on and it was the Romulan ear and she was about to go in Picard's head, I'm like, oh, come on, guys. I mean, yeah, like, it's on. so obvious. If they didn't reveal it, it w- actually would have been dumb. You know, if there was not a reveal after that ear, I mean, because obviously the device was created for Romulan ear. Right, uh, right. And, you know, so it's like... Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, and for a minute there, I was like, is it Easter eggs or is she Romulan? Because if yeah, if oh, had, if, you know, if she had not been Romulan, I would have been like, okay, guys, too many Easter eggs. It's super stop misleading. It. Yeah. yeah, or not? It's like distracting. But you know what's cool is our original theory about how this season was going to roll down is still alive after seven episodes, yeah, well, and the fact that they introduce Romulan back into it <laughs> really like gives it a little bit of life, especially since we haven't seen the mind meld that's coming in one in one of the upcoming three episodes some either Vulcans or Romulan are going to do a mind meld on a kid who's dressed in like 20th century attire. Right. Okay. And, uh, in Soon's kid, Soon's, Soon's Android or clone, Con- whatever Con- the heck she Coney, is, Coney, whatever is going to witness it. Not Doge. <laughs> Not Doge. Right. And so it's going to be like, that hasn't happened yet. And that's going to be an entire page turner, which will have a video for you probably on Tuesday about that. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that, um, I mean, we're not going to be 100% correct. I get that. But no, if, it's, it's impossible. If we were like 70% correct, I'm calling it a win. <laughs> if we're 50% correct, I'm going to call it a win. So like, <laughs> so, like, what if it's not, instead of being Colonel Green, you know, that character is Adam Stone. Right. You right. Know? And we, I think we, I think we're on that track. Right. And, and so it wasn't Q that modified anything it was romulans in some way influencing adam soon and that would be fascinating yeah it would be because it's a little bit odd i did not like the comment and i don't i don't really believe it because it breaks star trek canon that um oh yeah sometimes they send different species to take care of other species like like honestly talon as a romulan should not be overlooking Picard's ancestor on Earth. It's just very weird, and it's hyper you know, convenient, which I hate. Yeah, Gary Seven said, you know, they take people from their own worlds and send them back to their own worlds, you know. And so the fact that they changed it here, I, I mean, maybe they're doing it to, to like, you know, force her into the role so that we they can make sense of it. But it would be more cool if there was something subversive about her and this character. Still, she's not Loris. This is not the person that Picard is in love with. We need to remember this. Okay, this is another character. So if something nefarious were to happen with her, then it would still be okay. Yeah, can I, Can I, uh, in honor of uh, Mr. Kadish, uh, he had a good point. He texted me, he, he text me yesterday, and I, I want to bring it up. How does she, has some of the most advanced technology across space and time, but she has to wait eight hours for her holographic ears to recharge? What? The, la, not Loris. Did, did the not Laura did Tallinn say she had to wait eight hours? She said it takes eight hours for her for her tech to recharge so she can return turn her cloak back on or whatever. Whatever oh, it is. I must have missed that part. That's weird. Yeah, that's what she said. And it's weird. That was totally unnecessary. Because they're they're more advanced than the Federation. And we've seen the Federation use 
similar technology to mask, you know, uh, you know, uh, alien features. So like, it's a, it's a yeah. weird thing. I, I and, and right then I'm like, oh, it's because they're going to use it as a plot device, but she has to hide her ears or whatever nonsense. Yeah. And it's going to be some, you know, plot thing. They could have just left that scene on the cutting room table and not given us that piece of information. We didn't need it. It didn't right. add anything. It didn't change. Nothing. That's the other thing about these guys. They feel like they need to explain everything. Everything. And, and when they do that, it makes it f- seem very hollow or false because they have to change something. It's like mentioning Picard's father, you know, uh, you know, I have hair, but you don't in this episode. It's like not, there's so many moments in this show where they've done this. There, it's just not necessary for them to point out. Yes. I mean, Guinan, I think when we met her, she had something that she was like pointed about. You don't need to tell us. We will, you know, let us figure it out. Yeah. We're Star Trek fans. We're not idiots. Exactly. They forget that. Yeah. So let's talk about Guinan real quick. Um, Cause I don't want this review to be like two hours long, but. Well, Guinan. okay. I, well, okay. Yeah, we do need to go back to um, Rios. Oh, you so. want to fin- finish out Rios first? Then we'll, yeah, because we'll... okay. So we got a couple. We got an interesting thing here. He used a line from uh, Voyage Home. <laughs> he used the Kirk line, where he's like, you know, no, I'm from Chile. I just work in outer space. Whereas Kirk said, no, I'm from Iowa, but I just work in outer space. So they use that line again as a callback. Um, you know, the one thing I didn't like, Rios is constantly telling Teresa, you know, he's trying to tell her without breaking some, sort of the, you know, the time protocols or breaking breaking the rules. Uh, but then he ends up taking him to his ship. So I'm not exactly sure what that was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, a little bit overkill. This whole thing, I can't tell you, I, you know, I need to be super sketchy and shady so you don't trust me. And then, oh, Picard's in danger, so I need to reveal this technology. You know what, F it, just come to my spaceship. Yeah, it was it was it was not good. Now he's going to have to take him to the future, or else we got a problem. Right now Just they like have Kirk to go to the took, future. Yeah, Kirk took his the one he showed the future, the, his his lady, whatever, uh, to the future. These folks, we're going to probably find a way that they find out that you know they die or something in a horrible car accident or something. He ends up taking him with him or something. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, so yeah, someone said that maybe he just stays behind. Maybe it's a reverse voyage home. I mean, maybe, but I guess, I guess, I guess, I mean, yeah. Because he was really they, into the, like the, the past. He's really into the cigars and the steak and the whole vibe. That's true. Yeah. I guess they could leave him back. I mean, yeah, that would work. All right. So, um, well, it could screw up their future though. No, that was still gonna be a problem. Like who does she end up with? Right. You know, so they there has to be some sort of explanation. Okay. So and the last thing before you move on to the Q and Guinan th- or the Guinan thing, uh, we did get confirmation that the board queen may assimilate current earth. So we yeah. weren't sure if this iteration of the board queen with Gerardi could assimilate, and they basically say that you know they confirm that for us here. Right. That is a fear, which we weren't sure. Right. So dumb. <laughs> it's so dead, so dumb. Look, I was completely fine with the Borg Queen taking over Girardi, even Girardi becoming like the future queen at some point, like that queen that was all messed up. Fine, cool. That's cool. Great. But if she has the ability to do what other Borg do, then okay, you just screwed everything. Like they should have just left that. They should have left like, oh, her nanites don't work right. Something they should have given it a reason why she can't just randomly assimilate people. Cause that's <laughs> another another story in a story in a story in a story. And you're like, I... and I still just want to know what the hell is going on with Q. Oh my god. All right, <clears throat> all right. So let's talk about Guinan because. Picard goes to Guinan and says. I need your help, Guinan. I need <laughs> that was you. Pretty good. That was pretty good, Picard. Thank you. I just have to sound like a very old, frail man. I need your help, Guinan. I Guinan. need to locate Q. And <laughs> Guinan's like, uh, hey, I can't locate Q. And then she goes, wait, I can. My bad. <laughs> hey, our vi- hey, we, we promised. We promised you guys that we would explain why Q is afraid of Guinan in Picard and voila. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, our, our other, our other 
theory video about Guinan is well it's spot on now, except for like where she we we, we theorized you got her powers from some other thing. But either way, no, she, no, no, we didn't theorize. That's the facts. They are theorizing in this show. Sorry, I'm I'm not going to give that one up. We got facts where she got her powers from. If they want to change that right. in Picard, that's their business. But right, either way, we we told you that Picard would reveal why she's so special, and seven seven episodes in, they did. Um, and I don't like it actually. I, I mean, I it. like. The idea. I hate it so much. It's so stupid. I, I'm okay with like. So I kind of like the idea of them being able to summon or her being able to summon Q. And with, without, you know, beyond his power, kind of like a genie in a way. Mm. So that would, that would, if I was Q, I would not like that. I would not like being jerked out of things by somebody just because they can. My problem with it was the bottle yeah, and yeah. the weird, the weird seance. It's a guy's, that, well, why her, would Guinan have the bottle? Right. Her people made a truce with the Q right. over a bottle and she happens to have said bottle that summons said Q. Right. Of all of her people. And how did, you know, it's very odd. And why was there, I don't know. It's something the most about convenient Q. thing on the planet. It's such a bad, it's such a bad, it's so bad. I mean, they had to come up with something and I, and I, I'll give him, I'll give him credit. When, when, uh, when Whoopi Goldberg did this, right. <laughs> and Q went like this. I mean, that was like the moment where you're like, Oh crap! What was she gonna do? Like, like what was gonna happen? Now he was already there, so she's obviously not gonna summon him, right? So, I, I don't. It was a little bit weird, and I know they had to come up with something, and there really was nothing. No, no, like, there is. No I, I could write. I can write this. You okay, want, go ahead. You want you want to include Guinan, and you want to yeah. find Q. We already know Guinan is sensitive to time time or whatever well that's what we said now they're not saying that which they should have no 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 they said that they said that when she got like time sickness or whatever when he was talking to her oh the allurens yes that's right all right so so make her sensitive to q too that would explain tng yeah that would explain now and then use and then travel around the city you can do a whole episode because you love wasting episodes where she's basically (laughs) a diviner rod for q (laughs) <laughs> looking for Q. That would have worked. Yeah. No, they didn't need to. I mean, I'm okay with the whole, like, they can summon the Q. I mean, that there had to be a real reason why Q would be sort of afraid of her, right? So we needed that explanation. Just being able to find a Q not, wouldn't, wouldn't give a reason for Q to react the way he did, I don't think. So they needed something stronger. I just think that I, what was the bottle and the strumming of the, of the I, it was very odd. They, it's like they wanted to connect the fact that she's a bartender. And let me tell you guys something. El Alorians are not the greatest bartenders of the universe. Like they're making this, if you watched the ready room afterwards, they're turning 10 forward. And the fact that Guinan's a bartender into the essential meaning of her character which so is not the case at all. She's done so many jobs. She's been married right. to so many people. She just happened to be a bartender on the enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, that's not who she is as an individual, like for her whole life. Yeah. During her incredibly long life, she spent a few years on the enterprise as a bartender. Right. It's weird. Holy crap. Like, now, now everything is about 10 forward. Everything. Everything is about like 10 her. forward and her being the best barkeeper in the universe. Like now they've got the a hell? wine bottle. Like, that gets that a summons Q because she's a Bart. Oh, you know, it's just like, my God, who's writing this stuff? 12 year olds. It's, it's so dumb. Well, it's, it's weird. Okay. Yeah, okay. So on the note, I know you're like, Hey, you, they can summon Q. It brings up so many problems. Okay. A, how are the Elorians even a threat to Q where they need to actually have a truce? Because the Elorians don't seem to have any actual powers other than the Qs don't like them. Yeah, they could have just wiped them out. <laughs> yeah. The Qs just could have wiped them Q out. Q could have just... You're gone. We need a truce for it. We, we could just literally snap them out of existence. Based and, on this explanation. Yeah. Right. And how do I know that based on this explanation and previous TNG? Well, because her, most of her people were wiped out by the Borg. Right. You think the Borg is going to wipe the Q out? So why do you need to make a truce with a clearly inferior species? Right. I'll tell you why. Because Guinan's the best bartender in the world. <laughs> That's it, man. In the That's universe. It. In the universe. It makes, so, it makes no sense. It's so dumb. 
they could have given it a little more thought process. This this could have been this could have been really cool, um, and they didn't make it cool. I, I like your idea of being a divining rod. That that cues it would have been cool if cues don't really have any power over Elalorians. That would have been kind of neat. Because yeah, we talked about that before where. Whoopi doesn't really disappear when the rest of everybody disappears when in Q who yeah, like, she's make, still behind the bar, but everybody else is gone because Q got rid of them. Yeah. She, they wouldn't you need know? powers if they simply were nullifiers basically to the Q. Yes. And that would make, that would explain why Q is afraid of her because he can't do anything to her. Yeah. That, that would explain why Q has an issue with her. And that would also explain why she doesn't have powers. It's not right. that she doesn't have powers. Her passive innate ability is that the Q can't control them. That's it. That's that, it. That would have been, why aren't you a writer? Just, just because, call, because just call call up Patrick Stewart and say, "Listen, I'm gonna because we out. don't have the right messaging." <laughs> All right. First, we have to include that the oil is killing the planet, and uh, right. you know, yeah. the wrong people are running the world. Right. So. so, when she did this, did it look like she was making fun of Guinan for a second? No, she did that on purpose. So she said she wanted to incorporate that. Because Guinan did it, and it was such an important part of her character. She really wanted that to be a part of this. So she thought she would include it as part of the seance. The problem with that is Guinan does it when Q's already there, like she's going to zap him. So if using that to say, that's how I call you, Q, isn't, it just doesn't line up with what actually happened. Oh, I thought she used it because she thought that maybe the guy coming in was Q. No, no. She used it because, and she's talked about it in the ready room afterwards she it said so she did, weird, she though. it looked like she was mocking the original guy and i like this actress but it almost like the way she did it and has like a half smile on her face almost looked like she was mocking the original guy it didn't mm. look like a serious thing and i guess i guess it's hard to make it this kind of it's hard serious. to tell maybe yeah. yeah Ugh. oh i hate it so much and then oh lo and behold everybody now the fbi are involved holy crap yeah, Holy I don't crap. think it's the FBI though. Oh yeah, so, no, because um, Jake Harnes, who played this this, this FBI agent here, mm -hmm. he was also Lieutenant Duquesne in Star Trek Voyager's uh, episode Relativity during season five. It was episode twenty three, and that was when um, he he played a time agent oh. who took seven of nine out of out of Voyager. Remember? And oh Runner my Run. god! So it's the same actor. He's, right. playing, he's playing the same character. It's got to be the same character because why would you bring that guy back? You know, and you also have seven in the show. So they're going to run into each other, which could be kind of cool. And uh, you've got Guinan already like calling him out in, in the preview coming up for next episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a time agent or whatever. He's a time agent, bro. He's got to be. I like that because uh, if you just introduced a whole new thing with the FBI, I would have been like, come on on i know that would have been so not cool especially since the fbi has nothing to do with this kind of thing nothing. like this would be this would not be the fbi this would be like like the people who uh the people out at uh area 51 that's who would have been involved in this it would probably be sg1 <laughs> yeah be sg1 yeah. yeah stargate command would definitely be involved with looking for aliens yeah so this is going to be interesting they would not have included at least i don't believe they would have included the same actor no you don't gotta pay pay world. that guy you can get any random dude to play that character if he's right away he's not you're right he's a time agent he's yes. a time agent. yeah that's interesting uh the last thing i Damn, want to mention bro, you should have, you should have saved that for a prime video dude what do you think what's that the time oh, the fact that, in that episode yeah that would have been, that been an epic theory well i mean i feel like it's I, we could, but it feels to me like it's too obvious. I mean, like, as soon as he showed up, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's one of my favorite I mean, episodes, and I didn't even recognize him. I guess some people didn't recognize him. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I know Voyager really well, so maybe that's what All it is. Right. Um, the interesting thing here is, remember the bar where Gerardi goes in and um, breaks the glass to raise her endorphins? Oh, so yeah. She can, so the board queen can remain in control of Seven. Right. The singer that's in that on the stage uh is patrick stewart's wife so the girl that's up there singing uh her name is sunny ozell and that's patrick stewart's wife and wow. she actually is a singer and she's singing one of her own songs and hey, she's sort of young she's youngish looking yes yeah, she's much younger than, than patrick stewart is mm. but i thought that was interesting that she was she had a little cameo there i gotta tell you oh damn i didn't want to do that i gotta tell you uh <laughs> 
the FBI agent guy, he he did a really good job in that in that bar when he was like making small talk and all that. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I totally bought that he was just like being annoying. And when he busted out the badge, I'm like, oh snaps. No, oh, he was there for a reason. You could tell. Like, there's no I, way. I, that... I didn't tell immediately, but then so he runs out the badge. I'm like, oh, that was cool. And I'm like, oh god damn, it's freaking FBI I know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. And then oh, so Picard leaves his com badge, right? Which we're gonna find out. This guy actually picked it up. I got a question for you. Where is Rios's com badge? I know for real, dude. They they at least please tell us what happened to it. It's yeah. still in the clinic, or he got it back. Yeah. Please, because it's so stressful that that he just left it. You can't and it, leave such advanced technology yeah, just like without out. showing us that he got it back or something. You know? Right? Yeah, they're not even going to. That's that's the sad part. All right. Um, that's all we've got. Let's wrap this up. That's uh, so. Uh, give me your thoughts. Uh, five star rating. What what do you got? Oh, for the episode, one to five stars for this episode. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe like uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I would give uh, the acting was really good, but they didn't move the storyline along. Um, it, it wasn't that it was bad. It was just kind of boring and there were some dumb things in it. I give it like a two. Yeah, I give it a two and that extra one that uh, it's really a one, but I'm giving it one star because one of our theories were proved uh, correct. So, yeah, I don't know if I like the five star system, to be honest with you. Maybe uh, we will come up with our own system. Just forced you to take have a, a harsh critic <laughs> critique. No, I don't mind being a critic. I don't know if I like the five star system. We'll, we'll come up with something. Uh, whatever it is, uh, not a great episode. Not a great episode. Not, not I mean, a great episode. it was like, eh, whatever. Did we learn anything? Not much. No. In fact, I feel like it was a lot of waste of time, the whole mindscape thing. I just. Yeah, we learned about Guinan. That was really the only thing that was that we really learned that, that mattered. I wanted to fast forward so bad during the whole mind thing. Yeah, it was boring. So boring. the acting in the very beginning was good, though. Between Picard and and um, and James Callis, that like back and forth you know, thing yeah. was really cool in the first few minutes. Right. Oh, also when, when they figured out that Girardi's, uh, the board, like we better call Picard. And I'm like, yeah, for what, what's he gonna, what's he gonna do? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of thought the same thing. I'm like, what's Picard going to do? What's about Picard going to do? Is he, he's you know, maybe he'll have an answer. Yeah. I would have called seven. That's who I would have called. She probably knows more about it than anybody else. All right, guys. So that's uh, that's it for the Picard review. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And uh, that's about it. Let's look at the chats real quick. Yeah, we got some good chat stuff here. That's good chats. We got some good chats. Let's see. Stress free K. Also, it probably would have been Homeland Security. Yes, that's probably who it would have been. Homeland Security. NSA or the Air Force, possibly. I'm telling you, SG One, Stargate <laughs> Command. SG Bring them in. Bring them in. <laughs> How epic would that be, though? If someone in an SGZ pad uh, patch shows up. <laughs> I know, right? Well, and you know what's interesting is they got him because he, uh, they, they caught him once again. How many times have people been caught transporting in and out in this show so I far? Know. I know. You know, it's like uh, they got him on a camera, a close up on him, zoom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the camera happened to be right there. And then, understand. of course, Guinan's like, oh, that's right. I got cameras outside. This is one of those times when they do it again, where they're like totally explaining dumb things. Like Guinan's like, oh, yeah, I had cameras outside of my place. Oh, no, duh. Like, obviously, there's a camera out there. Why do you need to waste time telling us that? Ugh. It's weird, isn't it? I don't know. What else we got? Stress-free K, 7.5. Okay, I like the 1 out of 10 scale. That's good, because it does give more nuance. See, the problem with 1 out of 5 is that you always end up like at two and a half for stuff. So you can give more nuance. So they say 7.5 because the dream stuff was boring. And I, yeah, I agree with that. Fair. Uh, what's the deal with the magic key? Yeah, that's going to be the key that Picard lets his mom out, you know, in his mind, in the little story he's telling, it's a magic key, but obviously uh, oh. dad had to lock mom up for her safety. And so he'll probably use a real key to get her out. Bro. I just had a wild podcast profit theory. Let's hear it. He he uses his mind key to unlock his mom. His mom takes over his personality. He transitions to a woman and becomes the board queen. That's Boom. why he, that's why the masked board queen says look up. You nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. 
his mom yeah assimilates his mind okay and she, and then he becomes the borg queen is he going to compete against uh other women in sports or something oh it, it's he's going to compete against Girardi, and that'll he's be the so, that, Borg, yes to be the new borg queen that'll be the social uh uh lesson for everyone okay anyone can be a borg queen actually it's funny i did see a comment somewhere where somebody said Picard will be the new Borg queen. <laughs> and it's like it was the one that the Borg queen and somebody's like, wait a sec, did you just say Picard will be the Borg queen? And it was funny because that's kind of what everybody was thinking. I mean, I, I, I can tell you, I, 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 I wouldn't put it past him. 